So what you just described sounds like uh, HPC or high performance computing. Um, is that what this is? Um, you know, that's actually an interesting question. You know, um, there there are some similarities and some differences, right? You know, in, you know. Uh, let me let me start at a high level and say, you know, one of the differences is, you know, in an HPC ge environment, generally, people move the data to the processing, right? Now, but oh wait, hold on, you know, uh, there's lo lots of data here that we're talking about, and so we want to optimize for the data. Right. So in the MapReduce or in the Hadoop environment, really, you you tend to move the processing to the data, right? And so there's actually numerous subtle differences between the two, but frankly, I think there's one major fundamental philosophical difference that I think uh, exists between the two, and that is, you know, HPC tends to support applications that are sort of, uh, you know, tighter, that are more tightly integrated with each other, mm -hmm. right? And so they create a more parallel kind of approach. MapReduce, on the other hand, right, have uh, has applications that run more independently. And so they create a more distributed approach, right? And this fundamental difference actually leads to a lot of other differences. So a MapReduce environment is actually easier to program in Right, but you know it can actually solve the breadth of problems that an HPC, a high performance computing environment, can solve. You know, so Chris, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how people go around developing these Hadoop applications. Sure. Uh, typically, when developers start developing with Hadoop, um, they create their own raw MapReduce jobs, and what they quickly realize is MapReduce is very, very hard to think in. Uh, the way it works, without too much details, the MapReduce functions are joined by um, key and value manipulations. That's really what they do. But real-world applications are multiple MapReduce jobs. It could be dozens of MapReduce jobs. And so you have all these key value manipulations that chain them all together. And it's just very difficult to think of the big picture solution that you're trying to solve when you're writing raw MapReduce applications. And so, the very next thing developers do is they create their own abstraction. And if you look out on the web, there's a, there's a bunch of abstractions on top of MapReduce that simplify things. It gives you, allows them to use their native languages like Jython or JRuby or, or, or stick with Java, for example. Um, the two most popular are Cascading and Pig out of Yahoo. And there's, an, there's a new one coming from Facebook uh, that was just released called Hive. Uh, so there's a couple philosophies here. All of these um, applications have what we call a planner. They'll take, they'll allow you to define a very complex processing flow, and they'll plan it into MapReduce jobs. And the value of a planner, besides keeping things abstract, is it can help you. It'll automatically look for physical optimizations in the data processing flow, uh, in order to speed up where it can the the execution in the cluster. Uh, and so, but all, but so Pig, for example. Um, on the other hand, they, they are a planner, and they provide you uh, with a language called um, Pig Latin. So you've got a completely separate language. It's kind of like SQL. It's text, but it's not SQL. And, but it gives you two, it has two, uh, two values. One is they, they, their planner will find physical optimizations when it's planned. But they can actually look at the text and find algebraic reductions or, not, or optimizations, right. just like any SQL op planner would do. Right. And so that's a really great thing. Uh, but you have, um, it's, it's text, so you have to learn a new Pig Latin syntax, but it's very discreet and very precise. Uh, cascading, on the other hand, is an API. It actually allows you to script um, through Jython or other languages to create your own DSLs and assemble these flows and then let the planner create the MapReduce jobs. And obviously that planner will find uh, physical optimizations as well. But you don't get the algebraic optimizations that you get, would, would get higher up. But you get more degrees of freedom in the kind of applications that you write. Right. So what is Sun doing with Hadoop? Well, you know, Sun actually has a pretty strong presence in the high-performance high computing and supercomputing space. And so, you know, uh, there's a lot of relationship here between uh, Hadoop environments and uh, high-performance computing environments. So I think we can really contribute into this space positively. Uh, you know, they, um, there's when I sort of start looking at it, you know, there are a few problems that I wanted to tackle, or at least start with, right? The um, you know, first one was really improving the I/O to processor ratio, right? I mean, there's a there's a rule of thumb today in Hadoop that says, you know, uh, you ha you require about one disk to one core. Now, 
That's not a very good ratio, to be honest, right? You know, I think it should be more like maybe four discs to a core or five discs to a core. And um, this actually makes a big difference, right? Because, uh, you know, you have fewer, you basically end up with fewer machines to process the same amount of data, right? And so fewer machines means, you know, uh, less cost. It means less power. It means less cooling. It means less floor space. It means easier manageability, and it means you know uh, cheaper networking, which is, by the way, a very important cost factor here. Um, so that's certainly you know that we're looking at that a lot, and there's a, a fellow who works for me called George Porter, who's been attaching uh, D-trace into this thing called X-trace, which is a distributed tracing environment, right? right? right. And um, he's actually getting some interesting results on this. And so, you know, we'll certainly put all, all this out into the community. Um, but there are other things also that I'm looking at right now, you know, is improving the reliability of Hadoop, for example, especially the name node. Now, the name node, as you know, is, the, is sort of the master for the, for the data, data management within the cluster, right? right? And, and I'm looking at it slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it from, we have a, we have a, distributed HA, masterless, peer-to-peer, -peer, mutable data store. Did I say all that in one sentence, in one yeah. breath? Yeah, you know. And uh, it's called Celeste. And, um, you know, Celeste might actually be a natural fit in this environment because it is a distributed data store, but its emphasis is on high availability and reliability, right? So we're looking at that. And, you know, a third area that we're certainly looking at is how do we make it easier for the developer, right? And so we started off with creating a live CD uh, that ran on OpenSolaris. And, you know, uh, the, the whole point of the live CD is that, you know, you, you just stick the CD into your laptop and you boot it up and it comes up and you can run a three node cluster environment and not disrupt your, your disk layout, right? And uh, the idea is just take it for a spin, right? And it's actually turned out to be a pretty popular move. And, you know, there are other areas that we're looking at in terms of manageability, you know, in terms of uh, API interfaces and things. But perhaps that's something for uh, uh, the next uh, Chris and Saurabh show, you know, where <laughs> we're sort of running out of time right at this stage. And, um, you know, I want to I wanna actually thank you, Chris. I want to thank you for coming and, and being part of this and uh, appreciate everything you've done. Yeah, thanks for having me. I like talking about Hadoop and cascading and just and distributed computing in general. Yeah. It's great.